What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about carbohydrates and weight gain. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study just got published on a cohort study, I think it was the Nurses Health Initiative it was called, something like 40, 50,000 people tracked over 20 years, I think it was 24 years. And in this particular data set, they were looking at how are carbohydrates associated with weight gain. They did find that people who tend to eat more carbohydrates gained a little bit more weight. Now, low carb and carnivore people will jump all over this. This isn't really a carb thing, this is a calorie thing. Because when they broke it out into subsections of carbohydrate intake, what they found was people who ate more sugary foods, more high GI versus low GI, and more starchy vegetables, so potatoes essentially. By the way, did you know potato intake is by far the number one vegetable in the American diet and mostly from french fries? They found that those foods were associated with like a one, around a one kilogram greater increase in body weight per year compared to normal. And I think the average increase in body weight on a per year basis was like 0.8 kilos. So if you were eating high GI, high sugar, high starch, high refined carbohydrate, you were gaining on average like a 1.8 kilos, two kilos, something like that. But if you were consuming things like whole grains and fruits, each like 100 gram daily increase in those was associated with like a half kilo or a full kilo less body weight gain per year, okay? And if you look at people who ate 100 grams of vegetables per day, just a 100 gram daily intake was associated with something like three kilograms less of body weight intake per year, and that's non-starchy vegetables, so cruciferous vegetables, basically not potatoes, essentially. A lot of people may look at this stuff and go, ah, see, sugar, high glycemic, you can't have that, it's gonna make you fat. The reality is it's just an energy density thing. If you are replacing like sugar sweetened beverages with a serving of vegetables, that is like a huge calorie swing right there. You know, when we look at the human randomized control trials, and you gotta think about it like this, these big cohort studies, this is like your weapon being a baseball bat. When you look at human randomized control trials, it's like a scalpel, all right? You can get much more fine into the details because in a cohort study, they're not controlling anything, they're just letting people eat how they eat and then they're retroactively looking at people who ate more of this, what did they have as an outcome, and, and vice versa. Now people will complain about those studies, but it's the only way you're gonna get 20 plus years of data on thousands of people. You can't do 20 year human randomized control trials, it's just not feasible. When we look at the human randomized control trials where they're imposing a tighter degree of restriction in terms of what the study participants can do, and they're telling them what to do, they're randomizing them and they're telling them what to do. The randomization part is very important because if we do a cohort study, people who eat more fruits, more vegetables, they also probably have some other healthy lifestyle behaviors compared to people who are eating like higher GI, higher sugar sorts of foods. They probably exercise more, they're probably less likely to smoke, less likely to drink alcohol. So it's hard to disentangle all those behaviors. Now you can do some statistical analysis that attempts to correct for some of this, but you can never covariate out every single variable. So human randomized control trials are useful because even though they're shorter and have less participants, what you can do is you say, this group of people goes here and this group of people does this treatment randomly. And then what you can assume is whatever other lifestyle factors are present are gonna be randomly distributed over those groups. And so whatever the outcome is, or if there's a difference between the groups, you can be relatively confident that it's due to the treatment and not due to some sort of inherent bias of the participants. So in the human randomized control trials, where they control calories and they match macros, but they have people eat low GI or high GI, or low sugar versus high sugar, they don't see differences in body composition. It's not that sugar is inherently fattening or lipogenic, it's just not very filling and it's energy dense. So people eat more calories. That's the story. So I'm not saying you should eat sugar. Obviously, it's probably a bad idea to consume a high amount of sugar. But again, you have to realize that some of these things are guidelines and guidelines are great, but don't become dogmatic about guidelines. And so many people do this. You know, it's like their brain falls out of their head. Well, they say, well, you know, the guidelines say to limit sugar and sugar is associated with, fruit sugar is pretty much the same as regular sugar molecularly, so we shouldn't eat fruit. But, but what happens in people who eat more fruit? They live longer, they, like, they gain less weight, they're leaner, they're healthier overall. So what is it about fruit 
Fruit isn't just sugar, it's also low energy density and it comes with a good dose of fiber in most cases. And so that's why the negative effects you see with sugar, you don't see with fruit even though it has a high concentration of sugar in terms of its carbohydrate content. All that to say, if you want to be leaner and healthier, it's a good idea to eat lots of fruits and vegetables and include some whole grains. All those things are part of a healthy diet, despite what low carb zealots may say to you. You don't have to do high carb, you don't have to do low carb, you can do kind of any different sort of thing as long as you get to the following tenets, which is appropriate caloric intake for your activity level and your energy expenditure, enough protein to support the lean mass that you want, and then enough fiber to get the benefits of health, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, and cancer. How you tend to fill those in? I recommend lots of fruits and vegetables. I also recommend some whole grains. And then if you want to fill in with some fun foods, that's okay too, as long as you have the calories for it. And that's how our app, Carbon Diet Coach, works. It's only $9.99 a month. And when you sign up, it will ask you information about your goals, your body, and it will use that to determine kind of your individual metabolism as well as what makes the most sense for your goal. And it allows you to pick the dietary preference that you like best, whether it's low carb, keto, plant-based, balanced, high carb, low fat. We have all those options. We're not pigeonholing you into picking one dietary preference. We want you to pick the dietary preference that allows you to be most consistent because that is what's gonna lead to the most long-term progress. I know because not only am I a founder, I'm also a client. So click the link in the description, sign up for Carbon Diet Coach, and I'll catch you guys next week.